We are recording. So English as a medium of instruction. This is talk about talking about using English as the language for teaching any subject. <clears throat> so this is this is talking not this is not talking about teaching English itself. This is talking about teaching other subjects, whether it's history or science or uh, sociology or whatever the subject might be, and using English to to do the instruction. So as we go through the slides, I'll be asking for your thoughts and opinions. At the end, I'll ask for ideas about how we should implement or integrate EMI as teachers. Please write down ideas as we go along. Now, when we get to the end of this PowerPoint, you'll see several slides where I have added ideas from students in previous TESOL sessions. So we've had a lot of ideas come forward out of previous groups. And I'll, I'll show you all of those when we get to the end of this, this, the PowerPoint. What is the currently preferred methodology for English language instruction to speakers of other languages? And as, as we discussed last week, and we've discussed several times, the currently preferred methodology is the CLT, Communicative Language Teaching. English medium instruction refers to the use of the English language to teach academic subjects other than English itself in countries where the first language of the majority of the population is not English. The world is seeing a boom in EMI as an educational model in universities, secondary schools, and even primary schools. The implications of this growing trend remain severely under-researched. EMI is being increasing, increasingly implemented via top-down policies, sometimes with little attention to the educational implications that learning through a second language can have for the millions of students affected. This research group exploring the effects of EMI on language learning, content learning, teaching delivery, quality of education, inequalities of access, language flexibility and hybridity, and the competencies needed to be a successful EMI teacher and other multifaceted aspects of EMI. The EMI Oxford Research Group cooperates with education institutions and organizations around the world, leading through research into the extent and effects of EMI across the globe. How effective is English as a medium of instruction? The next two or three slides are taken uh, from points uh, during an interview with Dr. Nicola Galloway. And the, this is a, about a, a British Council report in 2017 by Nicola Galloway, Jaroslaw Kriukau, and Takuya Numajari. There is little research into EMI's impact on how much English students learn and what content they absorb. A quote by Dr. Nicola Galloway. Practical reasons for using EMI. 94% of research in international high-end publications is in English. In order to stay current, it's necessary to learn in English. Content mostly English in technical fields, students' dissertations and research. Universities in nations where students tend to be highly proficient in English, example, the Netherlands and Scandinavian countries, have often switched to English as the, the main language of instruction at those universities. 
especially for courses in the STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Current boom in EMI is due to mistakenly the view that EMI speeds up graduates' upward social and economic mobility. Governments believe that EMI improves in students' English proficiency and therefore it equals a workforce more fluent in English. EMI gives students a double benefit, knowledge of their subject plus English language skills. Governments and students think it equals more attractive in the global job market. Governments and students think that if a student is learning in English and becomes fluent in English, they will look more attractive in the global job market. University switching to English to improve the graduate's job prospects, more tempting to applicants drawn by well-paid future careers, English is the language of research. More faculty speaking English equals an increase of English language research published in international journals, raising the university's position in rankings. The surprising finding is that staff and students think differently about EMI than do the governments and the educational institutions. They believe it's the, that we need to provide a clear rationale for EMI programs, what students will learn and how much English will be used. In 2003, Robina Kiyuni wrote a paper I called the challenges of using English as a medium of instruction in multilingual contexts, a view from Ugandan classrooms, language culture and curriculum. The next six or seven slides draw points from this paper. Robin A suggested the challenge is the teacher's use of EMI. He suggests that it frustrates students' learning efforts instead of facilitating them. The solution is the careful adoption of a bilingual-based communication-oriented approach to instruction. Teachers' awareness of the learner's deficiencies in English, in using English and the relative fluency they may exhibit in using their mother tongues. To facilitate learners' comprehension and analysis of classroom talk, teachers should be trained in two basic elements. First, the skills necessary to support learning through an analytical understanding of language-related barriers. In other words, the skills of integration for enhancing the student's performance of the heuristic, the self-learning, imaginative and representational functions of language. Two, the teacher should be fluent in the two critical skills of questioning and explaining. As teachers, how do we approach this challenge? Teachers should be involved in communication-based, communication-oriented learning activities also referred to as professional development. We should encourage students to think aloud. Students' questions and requests for clarification are a positive sign of their attempts to internalize and organize knowledge. Now I would ask that you share some ideas, thoughts that you have for the implementation and integration of EMI within your classroom. So as I was going through this PowerPoint, if you had any thoughts that came to mind about how to integrate and implement EMI in your classroom, then uh, please state those ideas now. Uh, for Eileen, it would be any ideas you have about implementing Japanese 
as the medium of instruction in your classroom, or V and E, it would be Spanish for you. These are some ideas that groups on of previous TESOL students, and these are the previous dates in the last couple of years that I've done this PowerPoint with other groups, and these are some ideas that they had. I'll just give you a moment to, to glance through these points that are on the slide. I won't read all those points to you because there's another slide here and a, a final one. So I'll, I'll just leave that up on the screen for a moment so that you can have a look at it and read it. Ask any questions you have or sure if you want to take a picture of it, that's fine too. Yeah, no problem. Do any of you have ideas that you'd like to add to the list? Excuse me. Can I uh, can I ask you about the so for teach teaching uh, to, for kid children teaching or for uh, adult teaching? It's, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, any of these points could be adjusted to fit with a group of children or with a group of adults. So the the ideas are they're pretty all encompassing. You know, so for instance, using movies for entertainment and using common everyday language and idioms, uh, you would simply find a, a movie for children to show children, or you'd find a movie that's been made for adults to show adults. Uh, television shows are a good way of of using or demonstrating the use of the English language, and and I know I know some young people who came from China a number of years ago. Uh, they had been studying English since they were five years old in school, and they lived in an English speaking ch uh, school in China, and uh, then they graduated from high school. They came to university here in, in Ontario, and uh, they used to watch the TV shows, The Big Bang Theory and Friends. Are you familiar with those TV shows? Yes. <laughs> they, they watched those TV shows to help learn the English language, to help learn the, the ways of, of common speaking patterns and learning the idioms of speech and uh you know and and t so television shows are a very good way of of uh enhancing the use of the integration of english as a medium of instruction as well yeah in my creating yeah go ahead sorry in my classroom i remember all the, my co-workers teachers uh, said uh, you know if they wanted to you know introduce a tv show they all would say friends and all the students were in love with friends. They knew, you know, everything about friends and, you know, they were crazy about it. But for me, myself, I used to say that, you know, friend is great, but it belongs to, you know, 1990s. Maybe some um, newer TV shows, you know, could be better. For example, for me, because I am very into American movies and series, I told them that, for example, this is us. I don't know if you have seen it or not. This is, you know, everyday life. And it's not just about some group of friends together. It's it's a really, um, you know, uh, every day for all of us. Friends is, you know, just for some people, young people living in that situation. And it's not new. It belongs to 20 years ago. But again, in Iran, back home, all students, all people who were crazy about it, and many of the uh, many of them learned English, you know, from just friends, just watching it again and again and again. But I think right. it really helps. It doesn't matter what what is the series. If they love it, they learn it faster. And also podcasts. I'm in love with podcasts. I think it can help um, too. That's right. That's exactly correct. And repetition 
is the best way to learn anything. Yeah, yeah. Audiobooks can be another one. Mm, good one. That's right. Yes, exactly. I often study with the radio channel 106.1, and um, I just listen to uh, from their um, conversation and follow them, the speak together after that. <laughs> follow the speak. I think it uh, helps a lot, a lot. Yes, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's, that's good. Yes, very good. So these were ideas that that previous groups have have come up with, and I think I think they've probably covered just about every oh. every idea that we could think of. Here are the podcasts. This was mentioned previously in a group. Cafeteria and the place is nice. I like this one. Establish one day in a week as English day. Uh, my my students used to do that, and it was really they 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 set a time to go to a cafe, and in that hour, no one was allowed to speak anything just but English, and it was really helpful. I I went there just once, but it was good. really helpful. Interesting. Yes, it is a good idea. And who, the student who previously mentioned that had had that experience as well. That's where that came from. Yeah. How about creating a, a blog? Blog. But isn't it just uh, in a written form? Well, in a blog, you can include a lot of pictures, videos, audios. Uh, there are some websites where you can make your own and add a bunch of media and connect that to um, social platforms and social media, which maybe can allow the students to practice the language, put their assessments and everything online, and at the end gain skills that are related to the tech. Well, like virtual skills that are very, very helpful right now. Yeah, nice. Yes, a blog is a good idea. I thought I thought creating a blog was was in here somewhere. But maybe it's not. I didn't see it. Maybe it's there, but I couldn't see it. No, I, I don't see it either. So I, I just added it right here, create a podcast or blog. Because those those are kind of connected in their style. So anyway, those are uh, those are ideas that have come out over over these last couple of years. And then these are a couple of more ideas using painting or drawing to express what students have happening in their mind related to the lesson and empowering women in yemen write in english and create posters to express how to improve the rights of women and empower what, them what is yemen daniel <clears throat> i'm sorry what 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 is what yemen country Yemen is a country. Yemen? Okay. Yes, it's part of the United Arab Emirates. Okay. It's near Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. So, any questions about this EMI presentation? Mm-hmm. Yes, it's good. No questions about that? 
Okay. So keep in mind that that uh, English as a medium instruction, a medium of instruction, is relating to all the other subjects. It's not talking about about uh, teaching English. It's talking about using English to teach about other subjects. So that's fine. Now, the next topic we're going to go on to. So today's main topic is about uh, teaching grammar. Excuse me, I yes. have a. Uh, we should make com some conversation. I should make a, a two conversation about uh, academic uh, Japanese teaching. So, uh, I today uh, learned about, uh, here heard about you uh, the, around uh, about this. Uh, can you give me some um, sample to conversation activity about that? Some sample after that. I have already two, but I made it, but I'm not sure is this is this is correct and or not. So some I'm I'm so confusing about the um, academic Japanese teaching the conversation activity is so which one is um, should have items. Yeah, I can check it. So, do you mean uh, you would like some ideas of topics? Uh, I I choose the one of the two of them topic, and I made a conversation activities, but um, the conversation activities. So, uh, I'm not sure is correct or not, not exactly to make created. So, I would like to. I uh, would like to uh, reading about you from you, your maid, your sample, sample of about the conversation activities. Academic teaching English sample, sample. I, th I think I know what you're referring to. Eileen, just give me a moment to. Uh... Give me a moment to pull up my conversation activities here. Okay. So when I did my conversation activities, uh, one of my topics was health and lifestyle choices. So when you, you choose a topic title, a topic heading, then you would simply, for you, you, you would use Japanese and create questions in Japanese about the topic, of course, all my questions and information are in English. But, you know, the process during the lesson itself, the activities and the direction and guide, this is all in English, but you would do this in Japanese. And so, so any, any subject can be considered an academic subject that you're using Japanese to teach that subject. So the academic subject here is related to health and lifestyle. Is this a 10 years old? 
I beg your pardon? So students age, average age is how old is them? For children or I think it's the children. Average age here is 40. Oh yeah, I adult, not 10. Okay, number There's 10, 10 students in the group. Okay, okay. So, I mean, this could be a topic. This could be an academic topic that you could use a, as a title. I don't have any sample kind of this. <laughs> Although this is my guess and um, I created a lot, but I'm not sure. So this is the first time I see that. Can you send me? I can send send this to you to to have a look at it and use it as a guideline as an idea. Yeah. Okay. This is so helpful. Sure, I can do that. Now. Hello. Hi. Hello, Zotter. How are you? Thank you. So, I Eileen, I'm just going to put my email address in the chat box again for you. Yes, I, I have actually. I have last time. I I uh, I have one uh, already. Memo that I have your email address. Email address. You've got it already. Yes. Yes. That's fine. There it is. Anyway, for anybody else who might need it. So, yes. Eileen, send me an email and ask me to send those to you, and I'll return that to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So, coming back now to our, our main topic for today, being teaching grammar. I like this little cartoon about the parts of speech. Because ever since the beginning of time, one of the most difficult things to teach has been grammar. Grammar can be a very dry topic. You know, there, there's not really a lot of excite, excitement around teaching grammar. So you have to make it exciting. You have to make it interesting. And these two, these two cave students from thousands of years ago were struggling with the, the learning of, of parts of speech and their grammar lessons as well. So the eight parts of speech are verb, noun, pronoun, adjective, adverb, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. Those are the parts of speech. And then each, each part of speech is described with pictures. A noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. Examples are cat, fireman, house, pencil, Chicago, so animals, people, places, things, cities. A pronoun is a word that is used in place of a noun. Examples are he, she, it, they, you, and we. A verb is by definition, a word that tells what someone or something does. It's an action word or a word of being. Examples are sit, laugh, run, jump. I'm not sure exactly what the e e e e ah is this laughter or singing, whatever it is she's doing that this is an example of, of an action. Then there's an adjective. By definition, an adjective is a word used to modify or describe a noun. Examples are happy, sad, short, tall, red, fat, green, or hairy, as in the little purple fuzzball example. An adverb, by definition, can be added to a verb to modify its meaning. It can also modify adjectives and other adverbs. It tells you when, where, how, in what manner, or to what extent 
an action is performed. Many end in ly, but not always. Examples of adverbs are cheerfully, briskly, wickedly, delicately, fast, never, now. So you notice many of these end in ly, but not all of them. A preposition is a word placed before a noun or pronoun to show its location or direction. It may also show a noun or a pronoun's relationship to some other word in the sentence. Examples, to, with, against, by, from, at, for, across, in. So the, this little mouse moves around to the different positions relative to the box to demonstrate the different preposition meanings. Conjunction is a word used to connect other phrases, words, phrases, and clauses. Examples, and, but, or, because. These are phrases, the conjunctions join the phrases and the words together. An interjection is a word that expresses strong or sudden emotion. Hey, ouch, yow, well, hooray, oh, hey, ah, eek, wow, rats, wow, yay, a lot of wows in here. It's used as an exclamation by itself or with a comma following it if used at the beginning of a sentence. It's also capable of standing by itself. Examples, oh dear, my goodness, wow, ouch, yes, no. Parts of speech practice. Please identify the correct part of speech for each word in the sentences in the, on the following slides. Make sure to write down the entire sentence and the correct letters neatly above each word. So these are your these are your, your letters representing the, the part of speech, the short form for the part of speech, and you would then put that short form above each word to identify what part of speech they are. So, yes. Thank you. Uh, conjunctions can be also for words such as uh, therefore, moreover, Yes. Okay. Because those words, therefore and moreover, they, they join, they're joining words. Yes. So in this sentence, which part of speech is the word the? Known. No. What what is the noun in this sentence? Dog. Dog. Dog is the noun. The word little. What is that? Objective. Adjective. 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 That's correct. And the word the. And relative um, article. There is nothing that is an uh, indefinite um, indefinite article. But there's nothing I don't know which um in which part you're going to just um include it. We we would use preposition to describe the here. Pronoun. So, and and what about the word ran? Verb. That's a verb. That's right. That's right. So this kind of a practice exercise could be handed out to students uh to work on and, and then take it up as a class project, take it up as a class group. Okay, any questions about, about that? No. All right, so let me just get the next item up here.
so when it comes to teaching grammar, there are also there are also websites, and I'll put this website, I'll put this link in the chat box in, in just a moment. Well, actually, let me do it now while, while I'm not sharing the screen. So there's a, a link and here's the page that it takes you to. So it is possible to to go to the internet and, and look up many websites that have uh, free grammar PDF worksheets. So that's that's what I typed in my search bar. Free English grammar PDF worksheets. And I, I got this website that came up. So you've got different grade levels here. We'll look at third grade. And and so these are different worksheets that that are are, are connected to the third grade. Now, last year I was teaching two young sisters online. And uh, one of them, the nine-year-old was in grade four. And I'm just going to show you some of the worksheets that I used with her. I would email these to her mother and she would, the young girl would complete the worksheets and then the mother would take a picture of it and, and send it back to me through WhatsApp and we would talk about it. So these are concrete and abstract nouns. So worksheets like this give the student an opportunity to and they're fun for little kids. They're, they've got these pictures of cute little animals and things, but they're, they're fun for the students to do. And students like doing worksheets like this. But then I would take it a step further with this little girl and I would, I would have her write a little story using the words from the worksheet. I'd have her write a story and then I would have her do do a little drawing about the story that she wrote. So the the idea here is to circle the abstract nouns and underline the concrete nouns. So the circled are are abstract nouns. The underlined items are concrete nouns. And then this is plural nouns, the worksheet of plural nouns. Add S or ES to form the plural noun. And at the side over here are the hints, and it gives exceptions for nouns ending in S, X, Z, C, H, or SH, add ES at the end. So porch would be porches. Solution, you add just an S. Success, it ends with an S, so you would add ES to get the plural, et cetera, et cetera. So there are all kinds of worksheets that are available online. Here's another one with fill in the blank 
So it's a basic camping adventure story. And the student fills in the, the blank spaces. So she wrote in here, she wrote her name and her sister's name. And, and then she said they went on an adventure camping trip. An objective, can I write, for example, on a short camping trip? And that's an adjective? Yes, <clears throat> of course. Any adjective is going to fit in there. Short, long, exciting. Sure, any adjective will work. And every child who completes this will end up with a, a different story because they're they're writing their own story by choosing the words that they put into the blank spaces. The fundamental essence is there, similar between the students, but they all get to to uh, turn it into their own story. And then, of course, there are things, puzzles like word searches. Kids love to do puzzles like this. So that's an, another style of parts of speech and grammar that kids like to do. So I would send, I would put together a little lesson plan idea, just a brief lesson plan idea. Now remember this little girl was nine years old, so it has to be pretty simple for her to follow it easily. And I, I would email this to the mother and she would print it out so the little girl had it to follow. And the, this little girl would would do drawings of of events that had happened in her life, uh, and then she'd write a story about it. Excuse me, which age um they have worked like this? She was nine years old. Nine years old. So she would write it. This is her cousin's birthday. Here's the cousin right here. This is her cousin's birthday. There's the aunt and the rest of the family members, and she would write a story about it. Nice handwriting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Good printing for a, a nine year old. Yeah. On the weekend, it was my cousin's birthday. He turned 23 years old. So for his birthday, we told him to come to our house at six o'clock. So me, my mom and sister and dad went to buy him a gift card for his present. Then we got in the car and went home. Then we went to get ready. Then we decorated the house. After we decorated the house, our dad went to pick up the cake. Then our dad came back with the cake and the candle. Our mom put the cake and the candle on the table. Then we heard the doorbell ring. We went to open the door. Then we saw our cousin and our aunt. Then we all went to sit in the kitchen. Then my mom went to bring dinner. Then we all eat it. After one hour, my mom went to bring the cake and we all sing happy birthday then eat the cake. So she, um, she would write these stories and then during, and her mom would send me the picture of the story and and the, the drawing that she'd done to accompany it. Then during the next lesson, 
we did these classes uh, through Skype online on in Skype. So during our Skype lesson, we would go through the story, we would read through it, and we would correct the grammatical errors and we would add punctuation mm -hmm. and talk about why we put a comma after some words and 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 so we would go through this and she would make corrections to it. Yes, Zara, you have a question. Uh, I wonder if uh, she was uh, learning English as a second language or foreign language. Uh, learning English as a second language because her family was from Iran originally. Oh. But they live, they were living here in Toronto. Uh -huh. So for her, she was learning it as a second language. Okay. Uh, was she born in Canada? The little girl was born in Canada. Yes. So she had, uh, she had, I actually, she had uh, her schooling in English as well. Yes. Schooling in, in English and they were taking special classes in Iranian. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. But for her, it was English as a second language because, of course, they spoke Farsi at home. Yeah. So Farsi, anyway, I... Farsi was her first language. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, excuse me. So, uh, this is about uh, writing exercise. and how about how about uh, conversation exercise exercise did you do well the the conversation activities that i did with her yeah were, were basically about the stories that she had written oh so here's another story and a drawing that she did. So this is where she and some friends went to the park and then they came home and had a pillow fight. It was, she was quite cute with these stories. They, they often started once upon a time. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a girl going to the beach with her friend Erica. When they were, when they were there, they first went to swim, then they went to the park to play, then they went to build a sandcastle. Then the girl asked her mom if Erica could have a sleepover. Her mom said, "Okay." Then the girl told Erica that you're coming for a sleepover. Erica got happy. Then they went home. Then it was night. First, they watched a movie. Then they had a pillow fight. Then they went to sleep. <laughs> so the conversation activity with her, with this little girl, the conversation activity was based around the, the writing that she did. So I just thought I would use those examples to show you some things that you can do with kids, have them draw a picture and then write a story about it. Or have them write a little story, a short story, and then do a drawing of the short story. It doesn't really matter which direction you, you, you go with that. Both directions work, work quite well. Before, uh, uh, before you should do, uh, you should tell her, uh, uh, she would, uh, she would make some conversation, the included in, inside about the story, right? You should tell her what, what is the uh, condition about conversation story. Well, we, we did talk about putting quotation marks 
around anything that was said by a person. So we talked about quotation marks and I, I told her about, uh, you know, the 66 and the 99. The 66 are the quotation marks at the beginning. And the 99 are the two quotation marks at the end of a, of a, a quotation. Yeah. And so we, we talked about that and, and we talked about where they would go in the story that she wrote. And as she went along, she got better at putting in this in these these details uh, with the original stories that she was writing. Okay. Okay. So we did do that. I'm just looking to see if I've got uh, another website here that I wanted to show you. The two six and the two nine, the kids is understand what's that, right? Well, the the quotation marks at the beginning of of something being said by a person. Yeah. Those quotation marks look like sixty six. Yeah. And the quotation marks at the end of of a, a quotation look like the number ninety nine. So I think about how to explain about the Japanese the conversation quotation. <laughs> so different. <laughs> of of course. Uh, so in, in Japanese, when when you you print something, when you print a sentence that somebody says, do you do you use quotation marks around the sentence? We use this one. I show you this one. Okay. You know? <laughs> I see. Okay. Yes. That that's very fine. different. It's very yeah, different very, from other very languages. Different. Very different, right? Uh, yes, it is Chinese. very it is very different. Chinese and Japanese. Are they a little similar to each other? Chinese this this one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's it's like that, the same. <laughs> okay, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where you you just need to uh, you need to adapt the ideas to fit the language that you're teaching, and with with V and E it would be a different a different thing again uh, for Spanish. In Spanish, they don't use quotation marks around sentences like we do in English, do they, V and E? Uh, we do, yes. Yes, it's just, like, uh, yeah, just when someone says something, you just have to say who said that. Yeah, but is it like 66 and 99 or it's different? I don't understand 66 and 99. Uh, well, six, 66, if you look at the uh, the chat box for a second, 66 are the uh, the quotation marks at the beginning of the quotation. This one and 99. Yes, 99 <laughs> are, the, are the quotation marks at the end of the quotation. That's right, Eileen. Yes. So 66 then. 66 is just at the beginning and 99 is at the end. Yeah, we get both. Okay, so then you, you would be able to use a similar kind of mm -hmm. reference uh, to what I've been doing with with this little girl. Lend it from you. <laughs> two six and a two nine. Okay. Yes. Well, Thank that's you. good. And any new little ideas are always good to to have. So then, of course, uh, along with with worksheets and having the students write their own stories, because I find if the students write their own stories and you work on correcting those, they're more interested in those. Yeah, than they are in in uh, making corrections in stories that are just handed to them, because they they have a, a vested interest in the stories that they have written, and they want to make them correct, so they like to fix them up, they like to fix their own stories, and and uh, you know a, f a number of years ago in in teaching 
uh, teaching of, of English and teaching grammar here in Ontario, there was a, a, a free thinking approach to, to language teaching and it was not required that students would spell words correctly. Uh, they didn't need to use correct pronunciation, uh, uh, correct punctuation. They, they didn't need to use uh, correct grammatical structure. They were just given the task of write a story and just let it free flow. Well, that, that's okay to get some ideas out and to do some brainstorming, but you need to fix that pretty soon because if we if we don't learn the the conventions of of writing and communicating uh, the conventions of punctuation the conventions of spelling correctly if we do not learn that information and we don't use that information when we're writing stories then other people will not be able to read them and understand what we want them to to know yeah. so it's it's okay. That's that's why I, I would let this little girl at home by herself. I would let her write her stories, and they were just a free form flow of consciousness. You know, it was, she had run on sentences, and the sentences could be joined together uh, with a conjunction. But she would often just have separated little thoughts, and then when we would work on them, we would add conjunctions to join them together. And and so she became better at that, but I would just let her have free reign when she was at home by herself, and and the the mom the mother was not really able to help her because her English is not that good. So, so then when when the little girl came into the, the Skype class with me, and we were on the the TV screens on the laptops. Uh, then we would spend time correcting and adding in the punctuation, the commas, the periods, the question marks. So she made a state as made a statement that was a question. I got her to the point where she would put a question mark at the end of it. And I wanted her to identify what was a question and include a question mark. And she did get there. Well, she kind of got there and then then they stopped doing lessons uh, because they they had they had a lot of lessons they were taking outside of regular school days they were doing she and her older sister who was 13 and i was the older sister was interested in drama and singing so i was giving the older sister singing lessons through skype and and we were doing dramatic readings and and so we were we were doing different things than the younger sister, but the two of them were doing uh, judo judo lessons, and they were uh, doing Iranian classes, like extra classes outside of regular school days. So they had something on every night of the week, and after a few months, it, it just became overwhelming for them. The mom was trying to keep them busy and active during the pandemic. They had been taking badminton lessons. They had been doing all kinds of things. And, and so the, the girls asked if they could stop their lessons with me because they were just overwhelmed with all these things. And so, so they stopped. But I like to think that we made some progress with the, uh, the grammatical rules for this little girl to improve her English. And, uh, you know, I might see them again sometime. It's hard to say if they want additional, additional time, additional classes, I'd be happy to do that. But it's very important to understand and apply the, the rules of grammar in whatever language we're teaching. And having the students apply it to their own writing is an excellent way of accomplishing that goal. Another way of, of teaching grammar and to inform students is through 
YouTube videos. So we've got this YouTube video. We'll play a little bit of it for you. And I take English with take lessons. In this lesson for beginners, you're going to learn all about basic English grammar. We'll discuss some of the most important grammar rules for using nouns, verbs, articles, and more. There will be a quiz at the end of this video to test your knowledge. So stay tuned and don't forget to click the link below to check out our free online English classes. Now we're going to talk about English grammar. First, let's talk about the parts of speech. There are eight parts of speech. The noun, pronoun, verb, adjective, adverb, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. Nouns are people, places, and things. Common nouns are non-specific people, places, and things. Proper nouns are specific people, places, and things. Examples of proper nouns include people's names, cities, countries, the names of streets, the days of the week, and the months of the year. They are always spelled with a capital letter. Next, let's talk about pronouns. Pronouns replace nouns. There are three kinds of pronouns, personal pronouns, possessive pronouns, and demonstrative pronouns. Personal pronouns are I, you, he, she, it, we, and they. Possessive pronouns are mine, yours, his, hers, or theirs. Demonstrative pronouns are pronouns such as these, those, this, and that. Okay, let's talk about verbs. Verbs describe an action such as a physical action or a mental action and a state of being. Verbs can be changed from the present tense to the past tense and the future tense. There are two types of verbs, regular verbs that follow a certain conjugation pattern and irregular verbs that do not have a specific conjugation pattern. Let's look at the regular verb walk. In the present tense, walk is simply W-A-L-K. I walk to school every day. Now let's talk about it in the simple past. All we have to do to regular verbs is add an ed at the end of the base form of the verb. For instance, we spell walked, W-A-L-K-E-D. I walked to school yesterday. Now let's talk about it in the future tense. There are two forms of the future tense. The future tense is created by using going to before the verb or will and then the verb. Going to walk and will walk. I am going to walk to school tomorrow and I will walk to school tomorrow. Irregular verbs do not follow a So PowerPoint presentations such as that are very useful in classroom situations. Uh, they, they present the information clearly and you can also send these out to the students or you could provide them on a, a, a website for the, the, that you've developed for the students or school website uh, where the students could access these and, and see them and watch them on their own time for review and for study purposes. So, so YouTube videos are, are excellent as well. And punctuation is a, a tough We'll let the ad run through. 
percent with Aviva. Combine car and home insurance and get on the road to savings. When we get past the advertisements, you know, YouTube videos such as this one about punctuation rules are very helpful for students as well. Everybody and welcome back to my channel, Sparkle English, where I teach you how to improve your level of English. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more ways on how you can improve your English writing, grammar, and speaking skills. So you can see here with these pun the punctuation marks, these quotation marks, you can see how we, we talk about 66 and 99. Because when when we when we draw these quotation marks, they it looks like the number 66 and the number 99 at the beginning and the end of the quotation. So that's where we get the reference of 66 and 99 from. Okay. Today's video is going to be an overall basic punctuation video as part of my English writing essentials series. This video is going to talk about 13 basic punctuation rules that you need to know to get started writing in English. I have videos on how to use each punctuation mark individually, so make sure to check the description below if you want a more in-depth video on one of these punctuation marks. So let's get started. Rule number one, every declarative sentence must end with a period or a full stop. For example, <clears throat> she loves chocolate, period. He is my best friend, period. My dad wants to go to a restaurant for dinner, period. We have a meeting in two hours, period. So for every declarative sentence or statement, you must end it with a period or a full stop. Rule number two, capitalize the first letter of a sentence. Examples, she loves chocolate. So you can see we have to capitalize she. He is my best friend. My dad wants to go to a restaurant for dinner. We have a meeting in two hours. So always capitalize the first letter of a sentence. When a sentence ends with a question mark, a period, or an exclamation mark, you would leave a space, one space, and begin the next sentence with a capital letter. For example, she loves chocolate, he loves pizza. We have to capitalize he and leave a space between the period or the full stop and the next sentence. So YouTube is full of, of useful videos uh, related to uh, related to teaching grammar. I do have a question, Daniel. I've noticed in different documents within the college that I work for, sometimes um, the bullets don't have any periods. And even in your, um, sometimes when you have the slides and PowerPoint and everything, I've noticed that sometimes they do have like periods at the end. And sometimes because they are bullets, they don't have them. Does it matter in English if a period is or is not when a bullet is used? Uh, so when you're talking about when I, I, I list different things, Correct. But I, don't, I don't put a period at the end of each each item listed. Yes. No, there, there's no real rule that I'm aware of about that. When when bullet points are used, it's point form. And because it's point form, uh, you know, you don't need to put a, a period at the end it, at the end of, of the point. Now, if your point form is written as full sentences, then I would use a period at the end of the full sentence, but that's not usually the case. Usually it's just like point form ideas, quick little ideas. So, so I don't think the period at the end of those items is, is a big deal at all. Thank you. You're welcome. So not only are there uh, English grammar PowerPoints, but there are so here, for instance, are Japanese 
Le ruisseau de raisin d'œuf 0% aluminium est différent. Avec 48 heures de fraîcheur et un quart d'hydratant. Le pesto de raisin d'œuf 0% aluminium, une protection durable contre les odeurs qui est douce pour la peau. That's very interesting. This is a PowerPoint about learning Japanese grammar, but these advertisements are in French. So it's a multilingual approach to this PowerPoint, obviously. Pure pleasure is enjoying the perfect blend of sun-toasted oats and real ingredients, carefully selected for our delicious Go Pure oatmeal bars. Go Pure, a moment of pure pleasure. Want more Japanese videos like this? Subscribe to our channel. Welcome to Learn Japanese Grammar, Absolute Beginner. In this video series, you'll learn basic Japanese grammar patterns and phrases through easy to follow audio and visual cues. Here's what we'll cover in this lesson. Ready? Let's get started. Hajimemashite. 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 Can we hear it a little bit slower? Hajimemashite. Great, and one more time at natural speed. Hajimemashite. And this means nice to meet you. Right. You can use this with anyone you meet for the first time. Right, and that would be the first thing you say. Hajimemashite. 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 In this lesson, you'll learn a very important sentence pattern, your first sentence pattern in Japanese. Yes. Okay, so the pattern is A is B. That is the meaning in English. For example, I am Jesse. You are Naomi. She is Jennifer. We have A, which is the item being talked about, and then we have B, which is what we identify it as. So in Japanese, how would we say a is B. A wa B des. One more time. A wa B de. So now that we've all had this introduction to Japanese, we should all start speaking Japanese to each other in these webinars. Shimi must stay. Last session, he, ta he taught us Japanese. Adigato means thanks. <laughs> I, Eileen has a definite advantage over the yeah. rest of us. So right. my point is that, that you can do a search in YouTube for uh, grammar videos in any language. Bienvenidos. Hi, friends, and welcome back to another great episode of the Language Tutor Spanish. Welcome to my Clase de Español. Well, guys, today I want to set up a two episode uh, class that's going to talk to you a little bit about some grammar structures and what order to put things in in some, in some cases. Now, before we've talked about how to use those reflexive words, mete, se, no, so, se, we've also talked about using indirect object pronouns, mete, le, nos, os, les. We've talked about using direct object pronouns, lo, la, los, las. Okay, sometimes we're going to use those in a sentence, and there's going to be an infinitive verb present. That means, and, you know, infinitive is a big fancy word of just meaning the AR is still on the verb or the ER is still on the verb or the IR is still on the verb. So we're going to bring those in to sentences that have two verbs present, okay? And so, so whatever language you're working with, there's a vast wealth of, of video examples on YouTube. Here's one on sentence structure, Spanish sentence structure. So you can certainly do searches and and find material that help you with your your class lessons and and your teaching, your teaching of students. 
Anybody have any questions about those those things that we've looked at? Excuse me. Um, the grammar, the uh, uh, grammar um, teaching, the listening plant will be included. This this kind of teaching method. We should uh, include this kind of teaching method, right? Well, in in the four skills lesson plans, yeah, yeah, you you would include pictures that relate to the topic you're doing, and you would also include YouTube video links. Yeah, to videos such as the ones that we've just looked at, and include those links in your lesson plan, because they would be links that you would use with your students. Yes, and there's um, another way uh, we are we are uh, uh, have about the grammar 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 assignment uh, uh, is for the have a have a um, real real less real uh, class. We will demo pro, uh, a presentation about the this grammar lesson class, right? Yes, you will have this assignment, right? And you're you're going to be doing those demo samples of four skills lesson plans. Uh, you'll be doing those. You did those already. We had it. We haven't done. Yeah, uh, Zara, you were not in class. We had it with uh, El Han. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Also I was supposed to present something, but uh, my internet connection is still working, so I couldn't just present. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. But, uh, there was no mark for that. Was I it was so. it an and I was graded. No, the the demos the demos are not graded. Okay. You you're expected to do some demos just for practice and. It's more of a participation mark. It's just a check mark beside your name that you did them. But but it's not an actual assignment with a mark given to it. But on March the 4th, uh, Elham that day will be doing lesson plan presentations and observation as well. So, uh, Daniel, does it have any effect on our final grade? Not Not a huge impact. It, like I said, it's part of the participation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it, 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 if you're not able to to do the, uh, if you're not able to do the the lesson plan demo, uh, because you've got bad internet connections, then, then uh, you know the Teasel's not going to fail you in the course because of that. Mm -hmm. Because we certainly understand that there are countries around the world right now struggling with with the internet connections and and Iran Iran yeah, Iran is having difficulties with their internet a lot of the time these yeah. days. So exactly. I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, if you're able to do it, that's great. If you're not able to do it, don't get don't get really concerned about it. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Teasel does have uh, an understanding approach to that, so so I wouldn't worry mm -hmm. about it terribly. Mm -hmm. Just before we go, I want to go back to the Canvas platform. We have just <laughs> two or three minutes here before the end of our time. So yeah, I, I have a question about the warm-up activity and uh, designing grammar, and then. Um, so um, there are some some activities that we need to do, including designing grammar structure and um, what else was it? Um, and also the warm up activity. Yeah, I had a question about this. So these so, these lesson plan warm up warm up activities, these are some ideas. So these are not the actual conversation lesson plan. These are just some ideas that you can use with students uh, to warm up at the beginning of a, a grammar lesson or a four skills lesson plan. 
So, so are could... we going to just uh, submit anything uh, under this activity, like warm up activity, or the, is it included in the conversation activities? Well, whether it's conversation activity assignment or the four skills lesson plan assignment, in both of those, you should have some warm up activity at the beginning that that encourages the students to get speaking and encourages them to to start thinking and, and talking in English or whatever language you're working with. And so these are just some ideas of, of warm up activities that you could use. But you can think up your own warm up activities as well. Uh, uh, Daniel, how many how many uh, lesson plans are we going to just develop, including twelve uh, conversation activity? Are we going to just add uh, actually? I mean, develop more activities. Uh, re I mean, regarding the for uh, for a skill something like that. Wait, I, 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 I understand, just understand that part of the activity that we're going to develop. Which which program are you in, Zara? Are you in the diploma? Uh, advanced, advanced certificate. You're in the the advanced certificate, so yes. I, I'm pretty sure the advanced certificate does four skill four lesson plans, four of the four skills lesson plans. Four. I mean, uh, twelve a uh, twelve um, a conversation activity and four. I mean, four a skill lesson plan. Is that right? Yeah, I believe I believe uh, that's correct. I was okay. in the I was in the diploma program, so I had to do six of the lesson plans, the four skill lesson plans. I had to develop six uh -huh. of them. But I think the advanced program does four lesson plans of the four skills lesson plans. Uh -huh. So you should include warm up activities at the beginning of. Each of those lesson plans as well. Each lesson plan has to have the four skills, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, activities in speaking, activities in listening, activities in reading, and activities in writing. Yes. That's right. So this is on the, the Canvas platform, this page. I did not. So you can have a look at this and and get some ideas from from uh, from the Canvas platform here, as well as other things that we've we've looked at today. Okay, so any questions, ladies? Yeah, I have a question. I have a question about the twelve activities, the conversation activities, because um, there is there is. Another activity about the MOOC so that we're going to develop regarding the, using the technology and the internet and our lesson plan. So I wonder if uh, all of those activities should be based on in-person teaching, or can can they be a part of the actually technology? You know, you can use technology in that uh, session as well. Uh, so you, I, I I got confused because. Uh, um, so most of the most of the classes I'm teaching now is based on the MOOC and also using internet and connection or digital, um, you know, um, digital um, type of the teaching. So I wonder how I can just um, develop my the, the, the activities, commercial activities. So I, I get confused. I don't know what what to do. Well, I would suggest that you you should. Uh... When you're doing the, the conversation activities, and, and again, I'm going to show you mine. I guess I have your, I have yours. I wonder if I, because uh, you know, I have, I have been teaching English for some years uh, online, so I can use my, my imagination to having in person uh, class activities. But uh, I didn't understand exactly what is the difference between this. To um, you know, type of types of activities, right? Conversation activities and the MOOC activities. So at, going to do. at the beginning of my conversation activities assi assignment, I had this page that I put here, and you're not required to do this, but I I put this here because because I wanted to express a few thoughts. 
So I said, all of my examples are designed essentially for classroom delivery. However, if the Moodle platform were available, I could easily adapt these activities for students to have online access to lessons and resources. I have been mm -hmm. using Moodle for several years with university courses I teach. And cur currently during the onset of COVID-19, these classes have transitioned to online using Zoom, with which I'm also familiar. So I just, I made that statement. So I designed my, my conversation activity lesson plans uh, to be basically used in a classroom setting. Uh -huh. okay. But I, I said that I could easily adapt them for online delivery without a lot of hardship. Oh, okay. can I again? We can we can adopt it without. Okay, and I have I have yours. I have yours, and I have yeah, that was so, you know, helpful for me. Okay, so I would suggest that you you might want to, uh, and because I always do this at the beginning of every every assignment of this type, I always put a an introductory statement page, mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. this is where I I make statements like this, that affect the entire assignment and these these, um, these apply to the entire assignment what, what what did you or what did you do for your MOOC um my activity can you can you share share that with us too for the MOOC project itself yeah yes yes i was not required to do that oh okay you didn't do that okay i so i that the MOOC project, I, so I did, I did the MOOC essay and I, I've, yeah. shown, I've shown you my MOOC essay, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but the MOOC project uh, that was developed more recently since I took the course. Uh -huh. And so I was not required to do the MOOC project itself, so. but you could go, you could look at any one of these uh, recordings of any of the uh, the webinars that we've got. Let me just get to, uh, sorry, I have to stop sharing so that I can access my toolbar, my tabs across the top. So if you go to the YouTube Teasel Canada channel, and on here, the these are webinars that are recordings of of webinars that I did. So any of these webinars could be considered as a MOOC a MOOC style. Uh, of instruction because it's a, a pre-recorded message. We're now recording this session. It will be available for review on uh, the YouTube channel and you'll get an email about it with a link in the next few days. So I'm going to do, do a, a quick review So any of these any of these recordings of webinars on the YouTube channel, the Teasel channel, could be considered as a MOOC project because uh, they're providing the information through an, an internet delivery system. So we, we are not going to just necessarily teach uh, a subject through the internet and, uh, for example, an online platform for the project, you mean? Well, your your project, the requirements of your project, ask you to to come up with a a, a subject idea that you would create a course. You'd create a course to teach that subject idea, and then you're, you're asked to design the first couple of lessons for that course. Are we going to develop a course or a lesson? For, for 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 one session. Well, you you're going to you're going to develop one or two lessons okay. as as part of a larger course. Okay. <laughs> but we we don't ask you to do 
complete the entire large course because there isn't time for that. We just ask you to develop one or two lessons. So you see, when I do, when I create these PowerPoints that I show you, so the PowerPoints, the, the PowerPoints that I'm showing to you on different lessons, different days, those PowerPoints are, are like a, a MOOC project. Oh, okay. Okay. And So another question. Uh, I wonder why uh, I can't find the other um, the other uh, teachers, PISO teachers' uh, pre presentation on uh, on YouTube. I can just find yours, but not El Elham's and the other um, presenters. Um, you know, I mean, um, presentation on YouTube because I can't. Sometimes I can't uh, attend their uh, webinar. Uh, on uh, Wednesday and on Saturday, but I can't uh, can't find their presentation on YouTube. Oh, well, I certainly have not looked for all. This session. Here's Alham doing a presentation. So I just found yours, and then um, and also um, a China. So that that person who um, I don't remember her name. And Anna um, Anna Patricia China. Anna. And I, and I, I just find one of one of hers, but not Elam. I didn't find hers. Oh well, th this is one of hers right here. So maybe they have already uh, uploaded. Could be. I honestly don't know. I have. Recording this session. I have not gone to the Teasel channel and looked at all the recordings. I've only randomly. Had a look at a few of them. Another question, Daniel. Are we going? Are we? Are we actually? Um, do we have um, to present or have a kind of demo, teaching demo, as a, as a final uh, assignment for the TESOL? Well, like a on, demo that they on, on March for. on March the fourth with Elham, you will be doing lesson plan presentations and, and observation. You'll be doing okay. another opportunity for demos on March 4th. Oh, okay, March 4th. <clears throat> so, so hopefully your, your internet connection works for you so that you're able to do a, a It demo. just goes up and down. Sometimes, uh, to, tonight, uh, tonight it was really good, but sometimes it's not good. It depends on the political <laughs> situation of Iran. If they're if they're scared of the political uprising, they will put it down. If not, it'll be okay. So I'm not I, sure. It I, understand. I understand. I understand. Yes, I understand that, and Teasel understands that as well. I know. Thank you. Doctor Valley is from Iran originally, so yeah, he, I know, certainly, I know that. he certainly understands the situation in Iran. But looking on the Teasel channel, here's one of Anna Patricia's. Yeah, I just found theirs. Yeah. Lectures as well. So so they, they are up there. You, you just have to kind of look for them, you know. Mm -hmm. So browse through them and, and oftentimes when you hover the mouse, like I'm doing right now, you hover it over top of the presentation, you see who is actually giving the presentation. Mm -hmm. So does that help? Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, I will, I will definitely take a look. Thank you. Okay, Zara, you're welcome. All right, ladies, any other questions? Thank you. No, thank you. For today, I'm going to stop the recording now then. Sure, thank you so much, Daniel. That was so helpful.